Hi. Today what I'd like to talk, to talk to you about is something that God's really laid on my heart, something that I think the scripture says is really important, that I think oftentimes maybe we don't place as high of an importance on it as we should, and that's feeding the homeless, helping those in need. This is something that the Bible talks a lot about. It not only says that we're commanded to do it, it you know explains the heart we should have when we do it and sometimes you know unfortunately I think that for a lot of us this isn't a huge priority I've seen many instances where Christians will see someone who's homeless and just you know do this whole thing and walk right on by and not try and help them and not even think about helping them it's just kinda of second nature just oh ignore that person but is that how scripture says she would should we should respond to those who are in need you know, when I've heard, of, you know, I've seen instances where disciples have had opportunities where they've been invited and have opportunities to help those in need, help those who are homeless, help those who are hungry, and don't, and don't even have a desire to, and don't think that it's important, and brush it off like, oh, well, that's not my ministry. You know, this person's ministry might be helping the homeless, but my ministry is something else. And I think that that happens with a lot of things that I'm noticing, you know, just as I draw closer to God and I read more of the Word of God. Um, and as I spend more time in prayer, I think what I'm realizing is that there's a lot of things that I think we view as ministries that are just something that are a part of the Christian life that we should all be doing all the time. And again, feeding the homeless is one of these things. And I think sometimes people, you know, use the excuse, "Well, I haven't, I haven't been invited. I don't, I don't know. Um, I haven't, I haven't had any opportunities to feed the homeless." You know. Um, no one's asked me to go. Well, the Bible asks you to go. You know, the Word of God commands you to help the homeless. So that's your motivation right there. And as far as opportunities, again, maybe there are some cities in the country where you don't have a lot of homeless. Maybe that's um, not something that's prevalent in your area. But I guarantee if you looked online for your area and looked up homeless shelters, I guarantee every city has one, or at least there's one nearby. Um, and um, especially if you're in a major city like New Jersey or New York, um, there's homeless everywhere and you know exactly where to find them. Um, and so I want to encourage you that I think that helping the homeless should be a bigger priority to all of us. And I just want to read a couple verses where I think scripture clearly states this. Um, just for example, Proverbs 19, 17, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord. Um, we have Matthew 5:42. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. Um, Luke 14, 12 through 14. Um, he also said to the man who invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Um, you know, we have verses like, um, you know, all of Deuteronomy 15, 7 through 11, it talks about, you know, if you ha if one of your brothers becomes poor, you know, how you should um, give to them. And it says, you shall give to him freely, and your heart shall not be um, grudging when you give to him, because this is what the Lord wants, and the Lord will bless you for your work and all that you undertake. For you will never cease to be, there will never cease to be poor in your land. Therefore, I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother and to the needy and to the poor in your land. So again, this is a command from the Lord that you shall open wide your hand to the brother. And it's that you shouldn't give, you know, it says you shouldn't give grudgingly. You should freely give to those who are in need. And you shouldn't like, oh, well, I guess, you know, you can have this. We should, freely, yes, you need this? Here, take it, you know. Um, and it says God will bless you for that. And then the other one that one that convicts me the most is in Matthew 5, 24 through 36. Um, if you get a chance, read this whole passage. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But there's this whole thing that he's talking about, you know, um, Jesus says to the righteous, he says, you know, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was sick and you clothed me. Um, I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And then the righteous will say, Lord, when did we ever do these things? And he will say, whenever you did this for someone else, you did it for me. And so there's this whole concept of God wants us to give. God wants us to help. And when we're helping others, God's saying, you know, you're doing that for me. And so whenever I walk by a homeless person, I always hear that verse in my head. I walk by someone who's homeless, someone who's begging for change or money, and I always hear the Lord saying, whatever you did not do, because that's the next part of this chapter. And again, um, look it up, Matthew 25, 34 through 46. But that's the next part of this. God says, whatever you did not do, 
for one of these you did not do for me so whenever I walk past someone there's been times that you know I'm in a rush and I'm in a hurry and I see someone who's homeless I'm just like ah you know maybe if I don't make eye contact they won't you know ask me for money and I'll walk right by and then I'll hear in my head whatever you did not do for the least of these you did not do for me I can't keep going. I can't. It will bug me all day. I have to stop, turn around, go to that person. So I've gotten to the point where, you know, if I see someone begging, I, I try and always, always stop. And again, I don't always, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not rich. I don't have a lot of money. Um, <laughs> I'm struggling financially just as much as anybody else is. Um, but there's always something I can help with. Like I remember, you know, there's an instance where someone was, you know, poor and begging in the temple and, you know, Peter and John went to pray and they said, you know, silver and gold I don't have, but what I have I will give you. And they told him in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk, you know. And so, you know, sometimes that's what we need to do. We need to go up to someone and say, look, I don't have any money. If I did, I would gladly give it to you. But I can pray for you. You know, we, 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 sometimes we think, oh, well, I don't have anything to give. No, we have our time. And sometimes that can be more valuable to people than, than money. Again, let people know that you care. Show them that you care. The Bible commands us, commands us to help the homeless and the poor and the needy. That is not an optional part of Christianity. That is not for just people in the homeless ministry. That is not just for people who are passionate about serving the homeless. That is a command for all believers, for all disciples, is to help the homeless. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus says, if you don't do this for them, then you're not doing it for him. And so it's this idea of, you know, what's our motivation? You know, and again, we should be helping those in need. We, 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 we must. You know, that should be a big priority to us. So I encourage you, the next time you see a homeless person, you know, or someone, you're on the subway, you know, if you're in New York and you're on the subway and someone comes in, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I don't mean to bother you, but I'm needing money for whatever, you know. Instead of being like, oh, maybe if I pretend to read this book or maybe if I pretend to listen to my headphones, they'll leave me alone. Biblically, when I see that's not the attitude we should have. And so I know I've been challenged to, again, when I see someone who's in need or someone who's begging, it says give to those who beg and do not refuse to lend to someone who wants to borrow. And so it's this idea of, I want to be more generous. And again, it doesn't mean you have to have a lot to be generous. Again, I don't have a lot, but I try and give every chance that I get. Um, if I see someone who's begging, I'll either give them food or give them water or give them, you know, um, I try not to give money because you just, in this day and age, you never know what the money's going to go towards. But, you know, I'll always stop and say, hey, can I quick get you a sandwich? Can I get you a bottle of water? Or if I have anything on me, I'll try and give it to them. Or, you know, um, I've started carrying gift cards and I have other friends who started carrying gift cards so they can give food gift cards to people. Um, you know, or if, if I don't have anything, if I don't have any money for food and I don't have any food on me, you know, I'll at least stop and say, look, I, I don't have anything to give you. I'm sorry. But can I pray for you? Is there anything I can pray for you about? You know, and some, I'll give them, give them my number. Say, look, if you ever need anything, give me a call. And if I do have something, I'll, I'll meet you for lunch. You know, meet you for, you know, help you out when I can, how I can. Because I feel that's what God's commanded us all to do. And so I just want to encourage you. Have there been opportunities in your life where you've had opportunities to feed, feed the home, homeless and the hungry and help the poor? And you just kind of brushed it off or you've neglected that or you've just kind of turned a blind eye and said, oh, well, you know, that's not my thing. I think the scriptures tell us that that should be all of our thing. Um, so I want to encourage you to seek out opportunities to help those in need. Um, you know, and not just help them begrudgingly like, oh man, I got to do this. You know, it should be, you should be excited to give. You should be excited to help. So again, that's what the scriptures have been challenging me and encouraging me with. And I hope that that can also challenge and encourage you. Again, because the scriptures also is promise. Again, God gives us a promise here that if you freely give and if you help those who, that who are in need, that God will bless you for that. So again, I want to encourage you with that. Um, wherever you are, whoever you are, I love you and I'm praying for you. And I pray that, you know, you'll be able to draw closer to God every single day. And God loves you. And out of that love, it says, because you know, we should love others because God first loved us. So out of that love, I encourage you to take the love that God's showered on you and shower love on others that God places in your path.